I think the bright side of all of this is like, this is going to help instill some hostility, anger driven development of like just f you, Nintendo. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to's, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm old man Vin, I'll be driving the uh, far ship SS Nightmare train tonight in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, joined every week by the man of bread himself, Wiggle, my man. W wiggles me tickles. Wiggles <laughs> high carb for life. And stay in a plate past his bedtime. You know him, you love him. One Pedro Mateus. And together Hello. with you, Shot Realm Dynamic helping us form two canes of Voltron. Yeah, or cocaine. Two canes, one Voltron. <laughs> two canes, one Voltron, dude. Uh, we're, yeah, we're going to get two series on Netflix and cancel. <laughs> oh, we get I, two? After, after, <laughs> after the Michael Bay movie. <laughs> yes. Gentlemen, I'm excited. I got the thing. I got a box in my hand right now for the audio listeners. It's blue. It says BPI in the top, and it says Open Source Smart Router. But it doesn't say is what it, what it really should here at the bottom. Starter Kit. <laughs> this is the BPI R4 that Banana Pie was kind enough to send to my way. And it is uh, very much a um, just the board. So thank you, Banana Pie. But also, I have to go buy a laundry list of things like heat sinks and the little wires for the Wi-Fi connectors and all the other things. I, I, I guess the moral of the story here is next time they're like, hey, you want us to send you something? You got to be very specific about the, what they will send you, right? Jordan, I also have to get a <laughs> USB to serial UART pluggy thing. Oh, one flash. of those guys. Yeah, it's yeah. Got, Jordan, it's got tip switches on the motherboard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You, got, you, do you have to like set some pins or some shit. You got the little breakers or whatever, the jumpers. Yeah, I'm like reading through it and I'm like, and they're like, you probably want to get this in case you break it. And I'm like, yeah. And I started reading through it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Let, now, let, <laughs> let me just go ahead and get that. When I break it, I'll be able to get it back. So looking forward to throwing that together. Um, in the pre pre super shows, and uh, actually, there, this is the beginning of the live stream. Come check us out on Twitch. Jordan was showing off his new floppy armrest. Wrist yes. rest? Wrist rest? I guess technically it's for, it's for like the, it's to go in front of your keyboard, mm -hmm. but I have a really wide mouse pad, so I just use it for my mouse pad. Yeah, I got this new chair here. Oh, yeah. Pineapple, pineapple head mode because I can no longer wear a ponytail and sit in this chair without having my head just. Oh, they didn't uh, jam headrest have an option <laughs> to like, you know, like they have on the um, uh, bicycle helmets, right? Where you can get the ponytail cut out. Yeah, I, get, I, I, I didn't think of that when, when I put in the order. I don't think they have that. But don't look. Like, don't look. They might. <laughs> they, 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 they might, but the headrest does pop off, so I can just replace it later on. Up I don't use headrest. I, uh, Pedro, you drive around uh, probably as much as I do. Do you lean all the way back and use the headrest? Uh, not the headrest, no. I'm usually I, leaned up to my shoulders. That's yeah. it. <laughs> I, and I mean, like, I'm, I'm trying it out because I have it, and I'm like, all right, let's, let's see what this headrest shit's about. Um, uh, I feel, I feel very supported though. It's very, it's a very nice chair. I have the old one over there, the old lime green, neon green monstrosity <laughs> that caused me no end of back pain. And now when I stand up, my spine pops, which is real nice. Oh, uh, it's always good when you know that you get like a good ergonomic chair and you sit down in it for the first time and it hurts. You're like, yep, yeah, doing something good here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> On the right track. Pedro Mateus, uh, outside of a cursing all things firefox earlier <laughs> yeah that 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 was the uh the the big event i suppose just because my week was work and uh stuff unrelated to work but that, that also took a bunch of time and it's 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 firefox what are you doing seriously uh how do you reintroduce something that people already hated firefox view when that was first introduced uh, and, uh, now you've doubled down on the whole hidden tab situation and made the list all tabs button just permanent for everyone, unless people do the thing that they used to do back in the day, which was edit, um, uh, user chrome.css. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just edit user chrome.css to hide elements in the UI. Yeah, that, that, that we've regressed about 10 years mozilla what are you all doing right, Pedro, the best i can do okay we can get rid of that all right 
We'll get rid of that, but we're going to add a second pocket button. No, we're, we're, we're going <laughs> to add more smart ad technology to Firefox. But we're doing That's... that anyway. Oh, yeah. they're, they're doing that. They're, they're doing the, uh, the AI integration as well. It's... The um, Mozilla coming out and going, we're getting into the ad tech business. And I'm like, with 3% of the browser market? No, you're not, Mozilla. No. Why are you wasting <laughs> money on this? Like, no one's going to pay you any attention whatsoever. I hate to break that to you, but yeah, it's a yet another and a long line of like, quit burning money, please. Mo yeah, Mo Mo Mosco really, really needs to like get new leadership. And I I've heard a lot of like former Mozilla people being like, what the fuck is happening? What what happened to this company that we used to love and work for? And now, now. there was one. Uh, I, I don't remember his name, but I follow him on Mastodon, and uh, he posted a link to because Mozilla had. Oh yeah, um, submit new suggestions for a new Firefox artwork. Mm. My uh, that, and that, he, that is my former coworker Mike Hoy. Oh okay. yeah, that's yes. the one. <laughs> people, people want to fuck their browser. Yes, right. this is true. There's a yeah. non insignificant amount of users. At the end of the day, it's all down to the horse to save us. He's going to come galloping in with, um, and no, it, it, with Nickelback, and it's just going to be like, and they say that the horse can save us. We're not going to stand here and wait for the steam. Oh, all right, update. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Linux. 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 Of the week, yes. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a horse that only plays a single <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but l l listen, we we strapped him to the Ludabigo device, I, and we made him watch Spider-Man from 2001 over shut and over up, and dude. over. I tried to get the horse changer for the boot. He didn't want it. He just wanted to get the single. Save some money. I understand. All yeah. Right. All right. Speaking of changing horses, you can change the back of your uh, Steam Deck, and a lot of people have already gotten very creative since Valve released the 3D models. Uh, but uh, well, as it turns out. Someone on Reddit found that there were um, aluminium or aluminum, however you'd like to spell it, uh, backplates for the Steam Deck that apparently uh, give some performance benefits. Uh, the original post on Reddit seems to uh, have gone the way of the dodo. Yep. Uh, sorry, this post has been removed by the moderators gone, of man. our Steam Deck button. <laughs> Oops. And... Uh, yeah, the uh, according to the article on uh, Notebook Check, there was uh, significantly less fan noise because the uh, fan RPMs were down 35%. There was a boost of the GPU clock, the GPU temps and CPU temps were lower, and there were more FPSs going around, which is great to hear. Right up until you get to the price, which uh, they start at about $120 or about um, 100 pounds. If you're buying them from the UK, not one, but two options, 122 or 123. Now these are anodized yeah. aluminum alloy housing shell case, you know, typical AliExpress, you know, that, that title just keeps going, man. Um, T title gore. Yeah. Right. They, they have, they come in black and like not black and they have white. And I they like have the striking, uh, ma magenta. Hook yeah, red, the, the, I don't the know. red like lipstick red and let's go <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's it's it, it's 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 very magenta ish uh but there there are some gotchas with this as well um the increased ventilation does not allow for forced air cooling for the ic uh and like other or, and other charger components which may cause problems later on um also uh it doesn't quite fit the backplate is made out of metal and the rest of the steam deck is made out of plastic so the plastic will warp and the metal will not and um, sometimes you may have like little, little cuts on your fingers from, from, uh, using the shoulder buttons because it might, it might slice you a little depending on <laughs> some the, filing uh, required. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but you know, I don't know as, as, as a sweaty Betty, as someone with like the chronic hand, hand sweats who needs to invest in gamer chalk, maybe something like this is good for me, but I'm, I, I'm completely down with this, man. Like I am like. I come from a time when, you know, plastic was an option, but so was a metal case, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember these days. And like, I'm like, let's bring back metal shells. Like Valve could put a hundred dollar markup on the Steam Deck and sell one with, you know, an aluminum shell on it. No problem whatsoever. And it call call it the Steel Deck. Dude, uh, <laughs> here's the thing. Like, if you drop a metal case, it doesn't explode or chip. Or do anything it, it goes bonk a little bit and dents hope more often than not the thing it bonked into you know yes 
<laughs> and like to this day, like the two things, if I have to buy a camera, which I don't, you know, I don't buy cameras anymore, but for like my daily driver tablets, that is like one of the things that I will not compromise on. Like the back of that has to be metal. I do not want plastic. And does, isn't like the Steam Deck OLEDs having problems with like hairline cracks around the vents right now? That's the I thing. I, I've, I've seen it show up on our Steam Deck a couple of times and because <laughs> I saw another's like, oh no, I got the thing. And everybody's like, uh, oh no. Those, those are the posts the mods let through. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, well, hey, man, the reforms are trying better as they posted on like a Steam Deck mod, uh, you know, begging people to come back after like, we'll just go somewhere else. Stick around for our Reddit talk, everybody. But yeah. I mean, that, that's cool, man. A GPU boost clock, you know, 38 more megahertz. Like, these are real numbers here, too, man. Like mm -hmm. a 35% reduction in fan RPMs. And that, that's going to translate into, like, better battery as well, because, like, you know, you're not yeah. just yeah. making a bunch of energy spinning a fan, right? So Plus, like, think about it in the wintertime. Yeah, hand, nice hand warmer. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine that it's going to bring the weight up a bit, and there were already a bunch of people on the internet um, complaining, it's too heavy. I, Pedro, I will make them an adapter for the uh, Virtual Boy. That'll clip right on the bottom. <laughs> a little I, 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 tripod. Yeah. I, 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 I think these guys just need to do some, like, up, upright rows and some, like, bicep curls. They need, they need to, like, become stronger. You, you know, you know the, the Sony guy was like, you need to learn patience if you want the PS5 Pro. No, you need to get swole if you want the metal Steam Deck. Okay, okay. I think about, like, anytime I see somebody holding up, like, a Steam Deck or something like that, like that, and I'm like, that ain't gonna last long, homie. You'll, you'll figure that out in a minute. In, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, very, very much a play with it in my lap sort of thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, even like a switch, like no, nobody's gaming like that, man. Like they, they, or you rest your elbows on your legs and go like this. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> Valid. So uh, I ran across something that is uh, technically a game. Let's talk about that. That's really our only Steam bit. We don't even have deadlock news for you this week, which I'm sure some people, yeah. <laughs> no frogs will be... Uh, no, no frogs will harm the yeah. making of this, of this podcast. But I ran across this and it's a... Uh, game but it's you you're talking about that very extensive documentation oh yeah baby uh this is pull tool and it is a tool for uh playing with balls if you really want to play with balls and sticks and rub your sticks and knock them into your balls uh this is the game for it uh but yeah it's it's a it's a simulation tool for uh simulating pools uh like the the, the game of billiards there's a lot of like physics uh cases involved that is handy when you want to like i don't know mod model a pool table and this uh, this app gives you the full capability to do it. Uh, I did try to build it from source, and my god, 99% of this project's dependencies are for documentation. But as Ven alluded to in the pre, -pre super shows, this is a simulation tool, so it does kind of make sense, and it gives you like the pandas 3D thing, so you can do like live code and and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just saying, need, just need some online multiplayer, guys. Like, come on, what the fuck? I mean, it might, it's, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. I understand it. But if you need that extra bit of science and engineering in your pool game, like, this is the perfect for billiards related research. I mean, think about it. Is your favorite pool game peer reviewed? Probably not. This one is. Did your favorite pool game cost Pedro an entire afternoon? Probably not. <laughs> this one yeah. did. It, it, unless unless it created a folder in his home directory, oh, no. uh, I, I, I did get it running though, and I'm I'm probably not running it right. I was getting a rock and hard five frames a second with the 7900 XT and the 3900 X. So uh, yeah, I think it's all CPU. <laughs> but yeah, no, I wait, saw hang on, the. Wait, did, did you not have a Rockham set up for the? Uh... I do, have, I do i do have rockham installed but i guess that was a up. joke but i mean i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if it's like no it only works with kuda <laughs> I, I, what it did do was uh cause was like hey wait a second i have 3d ultra cool pool installed on this machine let's go play some more and uh yeah the, someone needs to actually take like the fancy tables and the fancy games from 3d ultra cool pool and implement them into something like pool tool to just like hyper realistic physics the, but the person who, do, who did that would be a games. fool, a fool, fool. fool, fool, and <laughs> fool, fool. <laughs> talk like a fool mode uh <laughs> i want i want to see a comment from my brothers and sisters man if you're listening who remembers yahoo pool Client i remember yahoo side, yahoo blackjack Java. was my thing so yeah there'll be a link in the show notes this thing is just called pool tool on github go check it out i like you can just uh pip install it 
Yep. This is uh, one of those things where, like, you know, everybody says, like, I want that, like, super realistic type thing, and, like, they're shooters, and you don't, because it makes it for an absolute bad game. Pool, I get it. I get it. Because, <laughs> like, you're, like, especially if you're good at it. You hit a thing a certain way, it should at least pretend. But this next one, most certainly, it's an A-plus in the graphics department. Well. A-plus, yeah. <laughs> plus. <laughs> Depending on what you're into, it looks, uh, they, they, they describe it, the throne, as a medieval um, adventure in true Metroidvania style. I call shenanigans. Wow. Uh, it looks, <laughs> it looks like a, a mishmash, the visuals at least, a mishmash between um, Salt and Sanctuary and Maple Story, which you didn't think it would work. And Mode 7 if on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> if it, it's uh, sort of <laughs> but yeah no th those animations are way too fluid for the uh, super nintendo yeah i'm talking uh, about the parallax scrolling homie mode 7 yeah but the yeah it is a very much a 2d platformer metroidvania with a heavy heavy focus on the uh the combat and learning the patterns like you do with most um 2d metroidvania of yeah. <laughs> oh, shock face. Uh and yeah, it is uh the the thing that stuck out to me is just how odd it is I to see the level Castlevania. Castlevania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I remember the, the that level. The I seeing that level the, too. the Castlevania um stuff with uh Maple Story level cutesy anime graphics. It's like that Okay. <laughs> That's an art I, style. <laughs> I gotta say, watching the trailer the entire time, the hit confirm noise is like some grade A meat slapping. It's just like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. dude, that's really a sonic really underwater level. Dude, yeah. I, I mean, listen, this is you know, and what we're saying, this isn't like direct ripoff. Like, there's some love and attention that went into this. Like, this is oh, yeah. like an homage <laughs> slash parody. Um, I, I'm I'm here for it, man. There's only two user reviews. That's why I wanted to give it a mention on the show. The throne. Why don't you go Almost check it out? Ghouls and goblins. It, it, it's got something to it. It's eight ninety nine, man. The the the, the animation it kind of gives me some flash game vibes, like how everyone moves. I think the Sega thing, uh, the Sonic thing, this thing controls like Sonic One. Okay, interesting. I think that is what my brain was looking for. If you've ever played Sonic One, that's what that looks like. That's been bugging me this whole time. Yeah, I can, I, I can, I can see that sort of. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the the, way, the jump arc. And yeah. you do need Linux with kernel three plus, ideally five plus. Yeah. So Ubuntu fourteen oh four three plus. I I mean I mean honestly, like if it's done in, in old Unity, maybe yeah, because fucking yeah. 12, <laughs> the, 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 the twelve oh four system requirement. Gentlemen, we could probably do a million subscriber YouTube channel doing nothing but that. What were you just describing, like? <laughs> using actual system requirements for Linux games and like, yeah, yeah. Th th does it actually work? Right. Th does it really? Did you <laughs> <laughs> and just is, get is, a is, bunch is, of angry emails it, from developers. I didn't no, think anyone would actually check. No, the, 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 the video <laughs> itself is just a re-upload of like Jonathan Frakes tells you you're wrong for five minutes. We yeah. made it up. It's false. <laughs> a writer made it up. Was it last week or week before last? We talked about, uh, they did a little oopsie if you've been playing Space Marines 2. They kind of removed the EAC binary from the game during an update, the one that Linux needed. So you might have noticed when you cut your deck on to go play your game, it works slightly less than it was already working on the Steam Deck, which not saying a lot, but I mean, it just wouldn't launch. That was quite unfortunate. Um, so two weeks after launch, we're going to get back the ability to play the game. At least according to one of the developers or Discord people in their official Discord, uh, Space Marine 2 will work with Linux after the next patch. It's going to sort it out. For the Linux and Steam Deck issue, the next patch should fix the launch issue with, uh, on Linux and Steam Deck. What was that launch issue again? A pretty complex uh, bit of code, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, that confused me a little bit because... Oh yeah, they removed the EAC binary and the game doesn't work on the deck anymore. Isn't it usually the other way around? But uh, no, as it turns out, uh, what they removed was the SO library Still for the binary. Epic Online. Yeah, for the Epic Online services, which is required for Wine to know what the hell uh, Epic Online Epic. services is. 
and how it relates to um, easy anti cheat. But yeah, some people, clever, clever people, have already uh, found ways around it. Uh, although, yeah, no, the game is brand new, and a lot of people want to play it multiplayer because it is a co-op game. Speaking of which, why does a co-op game need anti cheat? Because we all, we, we all, so, got, Pedro, we all got that friend. Sega, Sega Even overlords. Then, let them, let them cheat. It's co-op. It's fine. No, no, no it's not competitive. I, I, you just got to like turn him into a frog. That's it. That's, all, that's all you need to do. <laughs> and you, you, you doing, you're doing your damnedest for the emperor and you turn over and you see a frog. A frog in some power armor <laughs> yeah. and you're like, fuck yes. Let's go. Uh, Let's do this. The emperor Kermit. provides. Yeah. Frogs. Yeah, the uh, oh, dude, that, speaking that, of Kermit, uh, did you see uh, what's his name? Um, Taka the, is gonna do uh, yeah, so cell, cell versus cell, yeah, yeah. yeah, perfect cell versus, yeah, yeah, yeah. looking yeah. forward to that. The uh, but yeah, no, that uh, yellow playable rating isn't really discouraging folks, is it? Because like nope. I was reading through the Reddit thread, and they're like, yeah, by the way, this has been listed as like, yeah, unsupported since the game came out, so mm-hmm. shouldn't be mm-hmm. surprised when support just leaves randomly but yeah malice or oversight i mean let's be real historically sega has been pretty good to us linux people which is especially weird for a japanese company and the warhammer franchise also has been pretty good to us uh we got the total warhammers we got um what is it space hulk a lot of the warhammer Mm -hmm. games that have come out have either supported linux directly or have just ran fine in wine so i yeah i get i don't think there's anyone at sega or games workshop who has like a raging hate boner it was just like Someone forgot to tick a box when they uploaded a build or something. It happens. It happens. Uh, they, they'll get it sorted. Now, I think it speaks to a lot because, uh, you know, the, I don't think the Steam Deck is a lot of people, at least not yet. Maybe it'll be the Steam Deck too. It's not looked at as like a primary gaming console. It's like that addition, the extension to your PC gaming library. You're like, hey, cool. I can play this on my Steam Deck too. Awesome. So like when it stops working, you're like, damn it, not like. Rah. I mean, you're still going to be like that, but you're still just going to do your PC and play it, and you're like, hopefully that'll get fixed. And I can see, uh, especially as time goes on and the Steam Deck gets a bit more, you know, into people's minds, uh, there's going to be a lot of people, kids probably, that w- have the Steam Deck as their gaming machine. You know what they're waiting on? The next iPad? Aluminium backplates. <laughs> yes, gotta work on those muscles right mm. from a young age. You know what? They, they, I, they I, I want um, cast iron. Yes. <laughs> throw, throw. Ah, my Steam Deck's well, a little dirty. Grip, throw that sure, shit yeah. in the fireplace. <laughs> I, I've said this, man. I don't know anybody that can work with cast iron. I've always, uh, at some point in my life, I will build a cast iron PC case. And never move it again. For, and you're, are you going to use it on ex- casters? No, 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 no. And then you got to use it for rust development. <laughs> the patina. Yeah, it's going to yes. be great, man. I just take the uh, motherboard out, toss it in a fire, <laughs> let it burn yeah. it off real quick. Like, yeah, we're good to go. Then you gotta pour some olive oil on there. <laughs> okay, so what you is the, the, what are the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thermal conductivity properties of? Japaning the uh, the cast iron to stop it from rusting. <laughs> oh man! Uh, so yeah, that happened. Good news, everybody. You're going to be able to do it. Bad news, however, Nintendo is at it again. And you oh, know what? no, I agree with you, Pedro. I Pedro is like, I would rather not talk about Nintendo, and I'm like, you kind of got to because this story would be very confusing if I said Switch emulator Ryu Jinx shuts down <laughs> development after mysterious moon company you're like i wonder who that could be for, for, for reasons <laughs> so spooky github removal oh man so wow that got big didn't it ours mm-hmm. why you gotta be weird man after a 2.4 million dollar settlement with yuzu and 8535 dmca takedowns in may nintendo's back to capture those hearts and minds jordan Oh yeah, they, the they, they the don't people. need them hearts and minds. The they, they got their childhoods. gaming company, dude. They are uh, going by the available information. Nintendo basically just threatened the Switch emulator, uh, dude. It was a one dude. I think he was in Brazil. I, he's like, I'm out. I'm gone. Uh, you know, uh, I voluntarily took things down. Peace. And you know, I read that, and I'm like, if okay, contacted by Nintendo and offered an agreement to stop working on the project. He was okay. Or, or we will shoot you in the brain with our that, gun. That is the exact quote from the developer. Contacted by Nintendo and offered an agreement 
stop working on the project. Now, if that came from literally any other company in any other field I could think of, that would kind of have been a wink code job offer. Mm-hmm. Or at least it would have been in play. So I can only imagine. Now, why is, why is Nintendo going hardball? Partially just because it's just Nintendo. Also, that Switch 2 is about to come out. And for whatever reason, they just want to, you know, dot the T's and cross the lowercase J's on this one, man. Uh, but I think we can all be rest assured that no small part of Switch 2 reverse engineering and development, thanks to actions like this, will be spite driven. And v- v- very, very, very like non public, too. It's just going to be like. It's going to happen in like back alleys and like Discord. No, this was one of the very unfortunate things I was reading through um, the gentleman's post about all of the stuff that they were working on. He's like, oh, I had all these commits. What was it like multiplayer, Jordan? So, okay, so they, 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 they had a couple things going. They were working on crossplay so that Reugenix can uh, connect to game to local multiplayer games on uh, the actual switches, which is probably something that Nintendo was like, mm, we don't want that. Uh, apparently, uh, they also had some, they made some pretty good progress with the iOS build, even though, uh, officially you can't use JIT in, uh, official app store apps. I mean, you're, you're not really worried about what people running software, if you're going to be running region X on your iOS, but apparently that metal backend was pretty slick and they even had it outperforming Vulcan in some cases, which was, uh, interesting. I thought it would have been insanely funny if Apple had pulled like a valve and had an ad with Reugenix on, I- on iOS. Oh, man. <laughs> that, that, that would have been the funniest shit ever. Oh, they should have brought back like the original iPod, like silhouette commercials, but they were playing right yeah. on Steam Deck. But but like to, to, to your point in the show notes, Ben, like, yeah, get, getting the, the Android and iOS ports, you know, if you can run your Switch games on your regular phone. What's the point of the Switch at that point, right? Yeah. Or the <laughs> shitty mobile games that Nintendo has been releasing for those platforms? The two of them. <laughs> Which have been so fucking bad. Mario and like Pokemon <laughs> Unite. I think this is, you know, one of the ways Nintendo can... I, I, I feel like they're doing a little preemptive damage control because... The Switch 2 is only going to be better than the Switch, yeah, graphics-wise. That, 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 that's about it. Yeah, That's right, about like. it. Like, <laughs> n- nothing else is It's still going to be, you know, a generation or three behind what you would get on a Steam Deck or a ROG or anything like that. It's still better than the PlayStation Portal. <laughs> is, is, is it, though? Because people got shit running on that thing, right? Like, yeah, but Google went directly to Sony to say, hey, we found a thing, so fix it. And then Google being Google didn't release yeah, it. Yeah, that's, 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 that's not that's going to stop anyone. <laughs> <sighs> this is unfortunate. And of course, this is like one of the um, things. I mean, it's an open source project that's been forked. But like, as Jordan was discussing earlier this week in our super secret Discord, like, yeah, w- once you do that scatter shot and that brain trust right there like that rarely reforms as a cohesive thing the, with open source projects so they can there, continue there, there's there's something to be said for momentum yeah and, like, and and a lot of stuff just exists in people's heads and once that goes away and i know the argument's easy to make well, we pretty much have like switch emulation done it's baked i'm like yeah but we got switched to well, so so there's that, and we we did we did find out, and so Reuginex has been prioritizing like accuracy of emulation, so it is not the same necessarily the same case as Yuzu, but Yuzu, the only reason it was able to perform as good was because they got a lot of illegal access to a lot of early software, and they were able to get that shit up and running. Switch emulation and they is quiet not about complete. it. Switch emulation do. is not complete. Really want to point out like. This was all clean room reimplementation. Like this mm-hmm. dude was completely within his rights legally to do this. This was just good old fashioned it's Nintendo shaking somebody down. Like it'd be a shame if something happened to you, like getting tied up in court for the rest of your <laughs> natural life. Luigi just showed up to his house with a fucking pie socket wrench. <laughs> do you think, man? They 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 just send you know a guy like in a green tux. Yeah, with with a bit with a big bulbous nose, and he's like, "It's me." <laughs> no, 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 no. You just open the door, you look at that, and he says, close the door. Go back to what you were up to. That's all they got to do. <laughs> I think the bright side of all of this is like, th- this is going to help instill some hostility, um, anger driven development. Like, just fuck you, Nintendo, mm-hmm. for the Switch 2. 
we'll have to see. Like that's going to be an interesting one to um, mm. keep track of, dude. I don't know, but I do know. I finished a little thing I've been working on called the Track Berry Pie. Now you might not have heard of these things. They're called Raspberry Pies. They've been out for a couple of weeks now, and uh, they're, they're they're new hotness. There's a pretty decent little uh, portable bits of electronic goodness. And I, we've talked about it on this show, Box 64. It's a bit of software that you use to play x86-64 games on ARM devices. You know, we talked about Witcher running on Risk 5 Guess what? That was using Box 64. And I've seen a bunch of people playing the games and, you know, running Steam through wine on their ARM. And, like, it works. I was like, I... It kind of got me thinking, like, could we apply that to game servers? Because, you know, over the last 20 years, we've not gotten a lot of Linux native games. We just haven't. But during that same 20 year period, we've gotten a lot of native Linux game servers to the point of like, oh, wow, that's got a server. That's got a server. That's got a server. Why didn't we ever get a Linux? And like, shut up, go away, Venom. I'm like, fine, maybe we can do something. When I started this project, I was thinking, you know what? Just maybe, just maybe. I could get a track media server to load because again, I am running an x86 64 binary on a Raspberry Pi 20W, a Cortex A53 with 500 megs of RAM. I thought maybe with enough patience it would start and I could possibly connect to it. Then I envisioned like, you know, driving around, moving the car maybe just a little bit slowly or whatever, than having to extinguish the ball of fire where the Pi 02 used to be. But it turns out that A53 runs it like a champ. And I just kept going. I put a full server controller on there. I got SQL database back in set up on this thing. It's got Datamania records. In fact, it's been running the Filthy Casuals Trackmania 2 server for the past month without a hiccup. And there's a gang of other servers, though. I went digging around. I went digging around. There's a full write-up on interfacinglinux.com if you're brave. and getting a lot of traffic on this page today about how to do it, because I also kind of use this as an excuse to document the process of setting up a Trackmania 2 server. But if we come down here to the bottom, here's just a couple of different um, Linux native servers that you might not even know about. Terraria, native Linux server, you can get that. Factorio, native Linux server. Seven Days to Die, Linux server. Counter-Strike 2, Linux server. And those were just some of the popular ones I saw that you could theoretically run on a Pi Zero or at least a Pi 4. And the Pi Zero was really interesting when it comes to power. You're going to be doing a Trackmania server, a little server, Factorio server. What are you going to do? You're going to go to Akamai or Linode or whatever, and you're going to give them five bucks a month to get that one core, one gig of RAM, 20 gig of storage, DPS, right? Super cheap, just does the one thing. Well, I broke this down. At load, the Pi 02W is averaging about 2.8 watts. And that's at load on the time when everybody's playing. The rest of the time, it's like 1.3. So if you apply some mathematics to those number digits, it comes out to about 2 bucks 70 a year. Not a month, a year. It just sit there in the quarter, being all tracky and be all many. I had a fun time doing this. Oh yeah, and I did have to find a way to add uh, an Ethernet port to a Pi 0W. Why? Because do you think this is irrational, either of you? Let me know at home. I don't want to run a server over Wi-Fi. That makes sense, yes. Yep. <laughs> I, 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 I went through the read-up, and like, yeah, I mean, you're probably going to get a little more sta stability out of your server, even if you're running it over, like, fast Ethernet. Uh, 10 100 <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yep. Nope. And like, and, and again, like, these are not high traffic game servers. That is more than sufficient. Yeah, You're like, not going to say even with like most game servers, like the actual traffic, mm -hmm. very, not very that minimal. much. So uh, <laughs> I hope this gets some people interested in this. I get some playing with these things, and like even if like you were sitting around thinking about doing something, like you just didn't have five dollars a month, or you got a Raspberry Pi laying around, you get a stack of these things. I know I'm floored. Nobody in the YouTube comments section has brought up running Docker on the system with 500 megs of RAM. Should be possible. I looked into it. Apparently, the Docker on Raspberry Pi only really works with a 32-bit OS. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't dig into I, I digged into it far enough. I'm like, that would be a ginormous pain in the ass. 
But once you get this set up, being a Raspberry Pi, image the SD cards. You can have a stack of SD cards. Because you're getting all, I got, you can have a Trackmania SD card. You could have an Unreal Tournament SD card. You can have your Factorio for that random time when people can get together and you're like, hey, can we set up a dedicated server? What do we normally end up saying? Ah, oh, damn shame. Because we're going to have to, like, we've done that in the after shows and countless times. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. we would have to set, then we get to do the port forwarding and get all, like, no, just grab the SD card, pop it in, like, all right, let's go. There's a yeah. fun little use case. <laughs> what, do you, what, was, what was your uh, take on it, Pedro? Did you look at it and you're like, this is bullshit? <laughs> no, I think you're going to get a lot of traffic just from the setting up the track mania two server bit. <laughs> <laughs> I now, mean, it's, now, a, now, Pedro, now, it's cha- like three steps, dude. <laughs> now, 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 challenge mode. Can you run interfacing Linux and Trackmania at the same time? The interfacing Linux website. <laughs> then, yeah, See, no, it, this it, is it, okay, Jordan. This is where it gets interesting because I got four gigs of RAM to play around with on my open source router that mm. I can most certainly. But then I'm like, can I get Box 64 in a container? <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I'm, I'm like maybe. Well, I mean, like people I, are I, already I, using containers to run a uh, 32-bit x86. I believe, um, yeah, and and, and I, I believe there is like a container portion to box. Well, this is going to be like, running OpenWRT, and I don't know if OpenWRT has support for containers yet. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah, I know in Microtech I do. I can just run straight up <laughs> Docker containers on my router right now. So. Fun project. Yeah, the moment you step it up from anything, because yeah, that's that that's a Pi Zero W two. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a fifteen dollar uh, uh, dedicated server. The moment you step up that level of hardware to something like a Pi Four, like uh, Mir in the uh, Discord is uh, bringing up right now, or a Pi Five, or any of the new uh, Rock Chip ones. All of a sudden, the, those opportunities, uh, <laughs> they expand and you can run a lot more things. And it goes to show you, like, you really don't need much to run a server, like nope. even like even, even a game server. So pe- people who are like very hesitant about getting into self-hosting, no, you don't need you really don't need much at all. But this is what I want. I, I want this to be cheap and approachable enough for, you know, because there's not really that there for like that Apache experience of like I'm thinking about like when I was a teenager and I got like my first Red Hat CDs, and I'm like, wait, this has got a web server on it? Oh, hell yeah, let's figure this out. Just to mm-hmm. get people interested in that low cost and the rewards right there. You know, you can get a server. I already had somebody ask, like, hey, can we get a Track Media 2020 server? I'm like, maybe. And what Pedro said, definitely on a Pi 4 with an A73. 100% that'll work. I was shocked. Box 64, pure Scandinavian witchcraft. I love it. Incredibly stable. Super easy to set up. And I'm glad I was able to find an alternate use than just playing your Windows games on Steam <laughs> through wide <laughs> on your ARM uh, system, uh, which is awesome as hell. This, I think, has its own practical use as well. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching the video. Like, subscribe, all that fun shit. You guys made all this possible. And uh, yeah, interfacinglinux.com. Go check it out. Thanks. Is this Bloodborne? All the single players. Yes. All the single that, that, players. That is Bloodborne the on the uh, <laughs> uh, top and of the article I got there. good news for you. I follow the PS4 uh, development, Pedro. Mm-hmm. I've had to unfollow it the past two weeks. Because <laughs> this guy has been going unhinged with updates. Like, they to the point where I'm like, did you, did you like fuck up your ability to release this? Are we getting, are you sending out individuals? It's like, no, no, every one of them's a chunk and he's doing like 15, 20 a day. Mm. He's hit his try and is going, ooh, ooh. Do you oh, think stuff, we're going to get up on screen? <laughs> do you think we're going to get Bloodborne, Pedro? This is what I think. I think somebody has like thrown down the gauntlet to him to get Bloodborne <laughs> running. That, that's the thing. By At the end this of the point, year. I, I think it is going to be a race between people getting PS4 emulation to the point where people can just play Bloodborne. <laughs> That's it. Once <laughs> Before you're done, Sony releases the yeah. Bloodborne at Diddy, no 4K60 Bloodborne, then development just stops. Well, see, but but here here's yeah. the thing. Now now is the great time to do it because Sony's spending all their effort fighting the fucking Nintendo Power World thing. Oh, They're right. completely ignoring all of the Bloodborne <laughs> shit. So now, Sauron's eye is distracted. Now is the time to deliver the ring. All right, uh, we, all right. But what about the we, Civic? Yeah. Okay. So we 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 got we got to talk about media research. Uh, they do surveys. They do market research. 
Uh, and uh, recently, it's paywalled, isn't it? It, it, it is incredibly paywalled. But Reese <laughs> Elliott here, he's given us a bit of a synopsis. And it turns out, yeah, it turns, it turns out the data backs up what people have been saying all along. Folks want more single player games. Turns out that when you're an adult, you don't have time to sit around and get good at multiplayer games and you don't have friends because all your friends are busy. So you want to have a thing that you can go and play by yourself. The author here gives you some advice because I know if uh, there, there are people who listen to the same cast who are game developers uh, who might be interested in the findings here. And that is uh, that if you're going to release a single player game, you might want to consider doing it during like the back end of the latest Fortnite, Roblox, whatever season, mm -hmm. because that is when people get really, really tired of shit. And that is when people want to experience new things. Uh, they also say that it may it might pay to keep your game lean because a you are competing with the live service so if some something that can be like finished or digested in a reasonable amount of time um will hopefully promote some more sales um in, in addition you know just stop making the game so goddamn expensive so that you don't need to sell billions of billions of copies to make your money back if you just make tight focus single player let games. me charge 120 dollars just, just add <laughs> premium purchases. That's what the last report said. That's all people want to spend their money on. Is Did like you see that dude from stuff. Ubisoft who was like, y'all are just a bunch of game hating fools. And it, it, he was like talking down to the audience and like his job, he was the chief monetization guy. Oh boy. From That's... like the casino industry. And I'm like, bro, bro, you, you probably shouldn't. You should probably just, he deleted his tweet. <laughs> In, indeed. Let's talk yeah. about all the lovely single players. Most gamers prefer single player games. This is true. This is the uh, Medea. Medea? How do we want to go Me with that? Media? 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 Sure. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, I think you're right, man. Live service games are pretty much here to stay. You're not going to get rid of it. Why? Because studios are going to be willing to take those 100 shots. We're 99 of them. Or just, uh, oh God, what, what was the uh, last one from WB? Uh, the Justice League, right? Suicide Squad, yeah. Kill Suicide the Squad, all that. The things that just die, and you're like, why are you even making that? Because they're just going to write them off. And they're, they're gambling, Concord. man. Concord. Concord. Gambling. <laughs> they, they just need that one. They just need that one Fortnite, and it's all worthwhile. They don't have to worry about it. So, yeah, this chart, this chart tracks. So they're keeping track of PvE, couch co-op, online PvP, and single-player games. Starting with the 16 to 19 age range, going to 20, 24, 20... 534, 3544, 4554, and old as hell, 55 plus. I'm getting there, kids. <laughs> and it reads like, I think to most everybody, exactly like you would expect it to read, man. Uh, you know, for me, you know, somewhere in my 30s, that like mid 30s, early mid 30s, I started looking for like a solid single player experience. So I didn't think about it at the time. You know, I, I didn't like. I don't have anybody to play with. It just naturally gravitated that way. And I think it's just like a time thing, you know, like when you yes. find time to be able to sit down and play a game, the idea of like getting people together, like, whoa, that's crazy. Like we have a very rare thing. Like we have a semi-captive audience where we get away playing some online stuff every now and then. But it really reminded me of the shift because like earlier, like 40% of people surveyed at ages 16 to 19 wanted that online pvp reminds me of one quake 3 arena hadn't launched yet the media outlets what passed for them at the time probably better than what we have now let's be honest <laughs> they were dogging on it why it was an online only game you had to have an online internet connection if you wanted to play quake 3 arena because if you didn't you had to play with those evil sadistic shoot from across the map butts if you cut them on anything higher than room temperature toast for the difficulty <laughs> so uh yeah like these days if i think about online so i'm in the demo of 3544 we're down to like 35 uh couch co-op that's what i'm looking for man i'm looking for like co-op and definitely higher in single player at 49 percent. so yeah that's my little demo right in there man uh 18 percent like yeah eight Here's a question for a comment, uh, maybe for some feedback for next week. Are you rocking like your early 30s or 55 plus and you're like, fuck all y'all little weaklings. <laughs> PVE in the morning, PVE at night, and when peace is on a bagel, baby, there can be PVE every night. Is that, is that just how you roll, man? 
online. I have a I have a question. What do they call PVE? Or is is that like an MMO, but you're playing alone most of the time? Well, okay. You think about like uh, like what about like co-op deathmatch? Because we got like I know Joe. Uh, Joe's in the audience. Uh, he plays like the hero shoot. You know the team based. Mm-hmm. PvP, the, 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 the Grover yeah. watches, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we're about the same age, but like that's his preferred type of game. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess given given the the, the categories here of like PVE, couch, couch co op, online PvP, and single player, I think yeah, PVE is just like network co op, right? Like there, you can you can play it by yourself. You can group up with people. I think PVE is like co-op here that, that's what okay it's. all right <laughs> that's what i'm thinking about I'm like 53 percent want to play single player games and i feel it like all go look at my wish list right now feel free to buy me anything while you're over there looking um <laughs> yeah, head feel, over to linux game yeah. yeah linux hey, game cast. Com slash linux we got our uh <laughs> look go to our staff we all have our steam pages filled with like what but if you but all jokes aside like what am, what am i looking forward to playing um like the last of us Silk Song, um, Avowed, yeah, Avowed, uh, and like what I like, my, my games that I enjoyed playing, like Tomb Raider, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, games like that, uh, you know, Just Cause 3, you know, I played that for a couple of weeks I, recently. I, I, th- I think one, one big killer as well is like single player with a co op element because like being able to play the game on your own and then bringing a friend in, it's kind of a nice thing to be able to do. <laughs> okay, before we get out of here, Pedro is going to tell you. Why you need to top Reddit user Pedro? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was. You know what? I was pleasantly surprised. Somebody like asked me a question about something, and I'm like, ah, this person was well adjusted. And I right clicked, I checked the pro- profile, and they too had a 14 year old profile. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> ah, a, f- you, you, a fellow old head. Yes, you were um, from the old times. Okay, yes. So you yeah, remember no. Reddit? You probably saw this because it was uh, everywhere earlier in the week. Um, there's going to be some changes to the community settings in, uh, or on Reddit. Uh, subreddits can no longer be, um, you can change the type from public to restricted to private and, uh, set it between safe for work or not safe for work without approval first. There, you, there's still some cases where you'll get automatic approval. If it's a brand new, um, subreddit, you still get it. Uh, if it has less than 5,000 people, it, yeah, you can do whatever you want. They don't care. Um, so, and they say, they claim that there will be a, an admin to review the request 24-7, 365. An I, AI I, admin? I look forward, <laughs> I, I look forward to that, uh, seeing uh, how they uh, intend to do that. But yeah, after they give a description of w- what exactly it is that they're changing, they're, yeah, addressing the so-called elephant in the room. Community type settings have historically been used to protest Reddit's decisions. Ah, so you're aware of it. And you're actively taking steps to combat it. Mm-hmm. To it's silence for your people. own goods. It's for to your re- own good, Pedro. To remove people's ability to uh, show their discontent by actively taking away the already inappropriate tools that they had to use in order to do so. So, yeah, uh, the comments are predicting, it's like, okay, so uh, what exactly is Reddit going to do that's going to generate a lot of controversy that they're actively trying to stop it before it even happens? Apparently it's paywalls. Uh, (laughs) We definitely talked about that. We addressed it. uh, And I know I brought it up when, because like they've announced like paywalls are in the future Mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. Um. That elephant in the room. The other elephant in the room is absolutely, this is in preparation for just something more fantastically unpopular. Like, I don't even think it's going to be like paid subreddits. I think it's going to be, we, we can't even, our, our, our simple little brains cannot conceive <laughs> of just the ass hattery they have planned of like, what, why? Because like, yeah. Reddit went dark and, you know, people like stuck with it, man. They're like, nope, we're going to shut down. They didn't come back. What did Reddit do? They finally, they gave in and removed all the moderators mm-hmm. Yep. and put in, you know, put in their guys. Like, there Instituted we go. their own people and brought the uh, things back yep. into public view. So that's how that played out. Cause they got ads to serve on popular subreddits. People like you can't be getting in the <laughs> way of that. 
they got Google results to to filter out, and then you can't yeah, access them if you're on a VPN. For that. There's a yeah, <laughs> you need to be in there generating data for the AI contract with Google, mm-hmm. and, actively and, and, restricting people's ability to hit them where it works when they do something that deserves it. So, I do wonder just how how much shit are they going to be throwing at that particular fan this time? <laughs> really, really reminds me that I have not checked Lemmy in a while. You know, you brought that up, and like, I really, See truly memes. tried to give Lemmy a shot. I did, and uh, you know, I ran into the thing we were discussing. You know, in the pre pre super shows, and was like, the the sixteen sub Lemmys, all with just a couple of users in them. I'm like, that would be really dope if you guys would like get down to like two, with like ten users in each one. Then I wouldn't have to because I'm not following all that. And I don't have time to check all these multiple things. And uh, another thing with Lemmy. There is no relay for Lemmy. Mm, and by that, yeah. I mean all of the mobile apps are not good. They're Deep less Brady, than on. optimal. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, right? You, you want to get another like four ninety nine from me? I'll do it. I'll hook you up. You know, make it easy Suck your dick. to get in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you're going to be working on an app, bring that convergence at the app level. Let people subscribe to a bunch of different lemmies and if they have overlapping um sub lemmies like I, the the two that i check are uh lemmy.world and uh lemmy.ms uh for those of you in the audience going the, ml why are you guys talking about <laughs> lemmings why, why are we talking about motorhead lemmy is <laughs> uh a federated take on reddit <laughs> And I'll, I'll, you, I'll if say they have that if you like to gamble, I'll tell you how to act. <laughs> if they have overlapping um, sublemmies, just merge them in the app. Just l- tell people like on each line, it's like this one's from lemmy.world, this one's from lemmy.ml, this so, one's from so lem.my. The, 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 <laughs> the, 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 pro- the problem too is that because of that, that decentralization, you get like nine of the same story posted by the same guy yeah. in nine of the different things. And yeah, like th- there, there needs to be some way to like tag things and consolidate them so that like Lemmy is smart enough to be like, no, this is actually the same thing. Or if the I- app is uh, has like a filter option to say, OK, if the title of the post is the same across both communities, just show one, just show just one. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, I know you're busy with uh, school and y- your university studies, <laughs> but a uh, young child who has developed space a and now has over 1 million active users roll a clock back on reddit Mm. Uh, let's get some reddit 1.0 1.3 1.4 going back i i I think there's there's a big market for that we're talking about that with uh with wordpress right where if someone just forked wordpress and just said we got rid of gutenberg everyone would just move to that yeah in a heartbeat they would and but then again you do run okay dude I, i was uh because I did, oh yeah, go to interfacing Linux. I actively block the AI stuff. Like if you got questions about your Linuxy stuff that I can help you with, hit me up there. I'll talk to you. Um, no ads or tracking and all that. The I went to post uh, the TrackBerry Pi thing on my face. I need like I need to post something. I was like, I don't even know where I'm supposed to post this. Should I put it in the blog thing or should I put it in the comments? And I, I was like, fine, I'll, I'll just add it like as a comment thing. Then I went there and I'm like, oh no, I got to do all this with HTML tags. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude i gotta do research to figure out how to embed a youtube video. like there's no dropping a link in there me, me, meanwhile steam is like yeah we just added the ability to copy paste shit out of google docs yeah yeah uh <laughs> but you know what i like that they kept that there because it warmed my non-existent heart because that's gonna get some kids researching like it did back in the old because then you go to you see these pages and you realize that Maybe there's like an easy template or something like that, but at least one, one of those kids did their research and they're learning about HTML. And they're like, okay, that's how that at least getting the some idea how that's stuck together, right? The 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 revelation that really everything is just a fancy text file was like the big Uh thing for me in computers. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you can just look look at it and see what it is. Ah, there's no there's no (laughs) mystery here. Oh, Squish man. that cat. Cat that fun. <laughs> yeah, when do you think uh, we'll see the end of uh, Reddit? So if Reddit will is omnipresent. Pre- yes, omnipresent. Yes. Yes. 
the Omni president. <laughs> it's, it's, it, vote for Omni Man for president. He'll just kill us all. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yes, our, I'm sure that's probably a subreddit. Uh, you know, we need something like that, and it's a it's a shame. That Look, we, mark a fraction, especially since there are you know thousands of like really good subreddits. Mm-hmm. Like right now, they're great places with great information in them, with great people in them. They're well moderated. And, oh. and, 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 and like, that's the thing. Reddit needs to, like, they, they should have realized the moderators are literally the lifeblood of the fucking community, right? They have nothing without the user-generated content. And mm-hmm. the only thing that, like, is keeping that remotely, like, usable is the mod teams. So, like, yeah. The, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, man. Like, you know, what we said last time we talked about Reddit, like, there's not the replacement for Reddit, which... It's 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 gonna turn into like another Facebook. It's it's gonna exist in its degraded state and just kind of be in be in limbo forever, I guess. Mm-hmm. I add me add me to add me to face say I'll put you in my top eight, yeah. baby. All right. <laughs> Tom, where have you been? <laughs> Last week. Uh we got two little bits of hate mail real quick before we get out of here because we're already running a little bit long. Uh I asked, like, hey, what do you old timers look for in Linux distributions? Because, like, we clearly have different takes than, you know, these young upstarts with their uh, cache OS and their hotel no borrows and uh, their Linux Mint. No, that's an ancient one. Back in my day, that was a young upstart distribution. When yeah, when, when, when Rebecca Black OS is like fucking 20 year old software, you know. Yeah, right. Of- <laughs> I mean, the OG Wayland distro. <laughs> So we had two people tell us about their boomer distros, Jordan. Yeah, the first one is uh, Pip5288, and they say, I used Kakios on my Acer Nitro 5 and migrated my OpenSUSE Tumbleweave drive. Okay, is an Acer my- Nitro 5? That sounds like a laptop, Pedro. It is. It's a new world. <laughs> uh, I'd say it's like five years old. Ancient. Vintage yeah, gaming maybe a PC, little bit right. more than that. Yeah. And they, uh, they, they also migrated OpenSUSE Tumbleweave Drive from their HP 8200 Elite SSF or SFF to his beefy AMD build and both run pretty well. And uh, the second one comes from Aluthos. Uh, and they say, I have to look for it being clean as possible with the distro. Most software I'd want, I'd, I'd want, I know stuff like Kakios or Garuda Linux I have too many things. Make this up either. This is these are real comments on the YouTube yeah. video. Two mentions of Cache OS. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we were talking about it last episode, so like, yeah. Uh, stuff like Hagios and Gridalytics have too many things added or customized to it. Been using Debian XFCE for years and will for years to come. That's the only correct answer. Three years, way. not five. It's twenty twenty one. That's when the Nitro Five came out. It's a 27 inch one. Yes. Uh, 27 inch 17. laptop. <laughs> 17 Tw- inch. Fuck I was you, like, 27 you inch don't laptop. That, fuck why, with why my emotion like that. Those? I'm like, dude. <laughs> I, I want, it's I want, like, it's yes. It's like moving one of those old TVs. You need a towel. I was excited. I'm like, there's a 27 inch laptop. <laughs> there probably is, but no, this one's 17. Dell made a 20 inch laptop. <laughs> yes. They did. Uh, I want the, with like the tiny little keyboard in the center of it. So you gotta like. <laughs> I guess uh, it depends on what you want to play around with, uh, man. Like, at the end of the day, it's like what I said last week. Like, just, just stay the hell out of my way. Let me build what I want to build. And, um, you know, that's that. Distro preference is basically, it comes down to, okay, what changes do you usually make when you first install your operating system? And is there a distro that already has those in place? Probably I, I, is that. I don't want to give I, that I, up. I, I think it even boils down <laughs> to, what kind of chips do you like? Not like that distribution. <laughs> Yeah. You, 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 you like Doritos? You like some Ruffles? You like some know. Springles? I don't like, that, the, I that, don't that, like Cool Wrench. You're a monster. I tried one, dude. I'm not a fan. <laughs> you're you're, you're not like patriotic the, um, to enjoy, the enough to enjoy the American the, those flavor? corn thingies? Those are nice. No, they're not. I'll make myself <laughs> ill on those things. <laughs> yes, I, that's because they're nice. <laughs> I, I'm on a quest to find like the perfect barbecue chip because some of them are really good and some of them are just like what the Every fuck are you even doing? Every barbecue chip I've ever eaten has tasted like barbecue chip. Uh, I think my favorites to this day are the Pringles, uh, the pizza flavored Pringles. Mm. I like I like me a good sour cream and onion. That that that's nice. I think the the most recent thing in memory that I because I just don't eat chips or crisp um, that I forced myself to choke down was a. Uh, 
medium sized bag of the Burger King ketchup mm. flavor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which they just the, tasted like fucking ketchup, dude. The yes. the, the <laughs> artificial cheese jalapeno flavor, I really like. Mm. Pickle and salt and vinegar. Blech. Not together, pickle or salt and vinegar. Yeah, n- n- <laughs> the sour neither, cream neither and chive. Is. Yes. Um... It depends on the salt and vinegar. Uh, there's like the. Wait, balsamic, does that have to be single source free range? Uh, no, uh, that, it's the difference between like regular vinegar and balsamic vinegar. I really like the balsamic vinegar ones. The regular vinegar is just like. Um, so, moral <laughs> of the story: that's the sport that's, of it is to like wake up the next morning like feeble. <laughs> yeah, but but moral moral of the story: that is the distribution that you should use. Yes, at the end of the day. Hey, before we get out of here, we got two people who want to thank last week. We got a $10 donation from, how are we going to go with this? Merlin. Merlin. Merzin. Merlin. 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 Dude, if you're a wizard, you're the best wizard. Thank you so much for the donation. And of course, uh, one Don, you know him, you love him, right here in chat. Chatting it up on Twitch, dropping a, I want to say 20. No, let's double that. 46 month resub. If you oh, are a see. Twitch sub, link that up. Come hop in that super secret Discord we talk about the other six days of the week where we're chatting about all kinds of things. But if you want to put a ring on it, help us out, head over to Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got everything listed over at LinuxGamecast.com. You can help us out and get a bunch of stuff in return, like the live and uncut. You're listening to this show. It's like an hour long. Dude, there's like three more hours to sit and put in your face every single week so if you're looking for that long podcast for that long drive for that long ride maybe you're going to a train space train you're riding on a space train linux gamecast has you covered and i also give you a video version that you can download play with not deal with youtube it's all there man pre pre super shows and um you want to hop on game streams with us come play some track mini on tuesdays and fridays jordan you got any multiplayer stuff lined up on your thursdays uh sometimes we do some marmello um we, speaking of co-op games, I I need a new good co-op shooter. There hasn't been one. I don't. I, I haven't. I haven't found a good one yet. Hmm. Maybe maybe maybe, if I, maybe I'll go back to Fire Team Elite. Maybe I just got to get good at that. Drop us a comment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you know, let yeah. us know. <laughs> you got to yeah, utilize the I'm other uh, parts of our brain, people out there, and be like, yeah. hey, they, yeah, yeah. L- lazy web. Other, other, otherwise, we are uh, going through the Parallon Gorgon DLC for Outer Worlds. All right. Yeah, maybe Which we'll is, play. Um, that is the really good one. <laughs> Space Marines when it's at the humble bundle. Humble bundle. We're we're still waiting on our final. What we hope to be the final try, and when that shows up in a humble bundle. Oh, no. it's sad. I, I I don't I don't want to do it to myself, but we gotta. <laughs> we we, we gotta promise it, the man. people. We gotta do it because I, I now like with my editing skills because I've I've already like visually like mapped out like the trailer before we start playing because <laughs> the clock's going to be rolling all the way back because we're going to be aging in reverse <laughs> oh god 13 years yeah <laughs> oh good times hey thanks for watching uh it's always a blast come watch us live on twitch 8 p.m right here if you're a death note or above hop in our discord 30 minutes early for the pre pre super shows and we'll see you there and you get any questions audio video production linuxing in general head over to interfacing linux dot com where i'm there to try to help you out all right on that bombshell let's cue the music you can always find me just doing the stuffs man poking things with my linux sticks over at interfacing linux i think i've got enough plugs in for that for like the rest of the year dude i think i'm good but if you want to get in touch with me just at vinstone on x or i'm at vin on our federated timeline mass.linuxgamecast.com and i'm probably still the only vin on blue sky which i try to remember to check occasionally i'm jordan you can find me at the bottom of the bag of chips underneath all that like leftover flavor distritus just in the corner there dig that out and i'll be there you can follow me on blue sky at frojo.bsky.app at mastodon at frojo.mass.linuxgamecast.com or twitter at the burning fool yeah, no, it's the the sticky powder that you just pour it down into your mouth and then your teeth get stuck together. That, Vore me, baby. <laughs> but you can find me uh, probably under your cereal box. My brain just had a momentary fart there. I forgot what cereal was. Uh, <laughs> follow me on Mastodon. It's unaccounted for with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll some credits. <laughs>
That's why you keep me around. <laughs> the deep cuts. Uh, well, we made it. And we didn't get we didn't get sued out of existence by Nintendo either. So we yeah. gotta thank our Theron for that. We also gotta thank our executive producers, one, two, three, four, five, Ian Egypt, Kraducky, Drummer, Thetargos, Bob Ram, Scott, Atomic Mike, and our little Nikki fans. They are Street Loth, Eggy, Basil, Empty, and Casey Clism. Uh, and the Sea Monsters, as in Joe, John, Dirty Dean, Angel, Dementor, System T R L, Rider X, Mac, and Nehemiah, Veritanuda, Trudgy and Mike and the Death Nose, Redisk, Mark, Tara, Oil of Hope. Benjamin, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Nevin, Turnover, Martin, and Renee, Leonardo, Dodger, Kim, Chris, like back at like Jim, Jim Brock, Ronka, Locka, Donka, Apollo, Zeno, Martin, Nick, Mocha, Jason, and Jolly, Joanna, Craig, and Dark Bike Wing. me. Not bite me, but bike me. And of course, our Libra Prime <laughs> players. <laughs> and of course, Sandy, Sandy and Shoddy, that, that, thank you so very ben, much. Ben, I got, I got to say, that, that, that pronunciation of Gronk the Lanka was like overly sexual. Mm, there, there's uh, there's a little stink on that. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> uh, until next week, ladies and gentlemen. Dine a fire. Bye. A sexy fire. Sexy bye. Five dudes. <laughs>